All right. all right, let's talk about silly bands. Those weird little shaped rubber band bracelets we were all obsessed with in fourth grade. Okay, so what most of you probably don't know is the silly bands we all know and love were not the first of its kind. They were originally created in Japan way back in 2002 under the same name, Animal Rubber Bands, which were just basic rubber bands cut into the shape of animals in an attempt to get the public to start reusing more rubber. They were an instant hit, and a year after their invention in 2003, they won an award in Japan for the best product design. As Animal Rubber Bands was continuing to grow and expand, in 2006 at one convention, a Chinese man named Robert Croak took the idea and saw the brilliance of it within the children's market. His first idea was to make them bigger and thicker, to be less painful, and to be used as bracelets. He started showing off his idea and other people quickly took notice and before he officially even started selling any, he already had competition. But in 2008, at Brainchild Product, we got the Silly Bands and they were coming out hot. Animals, cars, instruments, people, red, blue, purple, it didn't matter, they were everywhere. Croak did come out and say he intended for them to be used to trade like one would Pokemon cards. In the same year, he started making tapes and videos about Silly Bands which became so popular Schools actually started banning them from the Scholastic Book Fair and whatnot because it was deemed too distracting to students. I don't even remember these, but maybe it was because the ban hit before like they even got to my school. But they were popping off, and you can get a pack of 10 bands for only $4.95. What a steal. But the sad thing is, you could only get them on the website. And it wasn't until 2009 that Learning Express in Birmingham, Alabama was the first retail store to stock silly bands. Oh, and they popped off. Within the same year, most southern states were selling silly bands in stores, and by by mid-2010, they had gone all the way up the East Coast. In August of 2010, Silly Bands were in more than 8,000 stores. Oh yeah, even Canada wanted in on some of this crazy action American kids were obsessing over. And a month later in September, Quiznos added Silly Bands to their kids' meal. You cannot stop the craze. In 2010 and 2011, they made celebrity collabs with people like Kim K and Justin Bieber. In 2011, Zoo Games released a DS and an iPhone game about Silly Bands. So what happened? How come they seem to be just as gone as quick as they came? Well, for starters, and most obviously, it's a rubber band that's being marketed to children. The amount of choking and cutting off circulation complaints never helped. And a huge part, like I said earlier, was there's so much competition. This market blew up with Walmart having just as cool ones like Logo Bands, Cool Bands, Zany Bands, and Googly Bands, and for much cheaper. It was obvious. But I know what you're thinking. Well, if we know the brand just did better, Better, why does no one wear them anymore? Well, what an easy fact, it was just a fad. And American children never stick on to anything. New phenomenon, trends, fads happen all the time. I heard this thing once that makes so much sense to me, and it says, Looking back through all the decades, from the 1900s to now, how many different kinds of kids and teenagers are there? A fucking lot. And how many kinds of different 40 year olds are there? Not many. Kids just want to fit in. That's what they do. When something new and cooler came out, they just grabbed their attention and they went on to those things, eventually leaving croak and brain child products with a product nobody wants and bigger brands like Walmart to go copy the next thing. Looking back at all this, silly bands were pretty cool. It's just one of the more recent child phenomenon and I actually got to live through it like as a child and I'm sure many of you watching this did. And they're always going to be nostalgic. Like you go to websites like Etsy or eBay and just see how many of these kind of things you can find. But we all moved on. In 2010 and 20. 2011, we all probably just started watching YouTube instead of caring about new toys, and that's just the world we live in now. And I'm sure if you gave a kid one today, they'd still think it's pretty cool, but it'll never be a thing. To us, it was like a thing, you know? It was just another reason that I think they're so special. And I guess all we can hope for now is they're being used for their intended purpose as being repurposed as rubber bands. Thank you all for watching.